In September 2024, Nigeria's headline inflation rate spiked by 0.55% month over month to 32.7% from 32.15% in August 2024. Now, this is in line with the Consumer Price Index report from the NBS, which indicated that rising food and transportation prices drove inflation during this month. This follows the NNPCL's raising the price of gasoline starting in early September. Joining me now to discuss this is economist and senior tax manager at PwC, Abiodun Kaede Ali. Abiodun, good morning to you. How are you today? Very fine, thank you. Good, you're welcome to the show. Thank well, you. I mean, looking at these inflation numbers, what main factors would you consider the key drivers here? Okay, uh, yeah, the, the key drivers are, like you said in your introduction, would first of all, the energy price, the cost of um, fuel, definitely um, took prices up because everyone actually felt the impact, right? So even right from the orcas, the traders, everyone, services, those who provide goods, they felt it. So definitely, I would say that's one key one. Then interestingly, um, there was also the impact of flooding, despite the fact that we were expecting, um, it's an harvest season, this is the harvest period. Um, even despite that, we we're hoping that this would kind of keep prices moderated, but unfortunately, um, that incident took place and it affected um, key food producing regions like um, Bono, like Benue, and a lot of regions in the north. So these are some of the factors then. We also can't leave aside the fact that we still um, have to import some items and we still, you can't buy an imported item with the Naira. You'd have to trade with the dollar, right? And once you consider that um, prices are high, especially for those imported items, either those that serve as input for manufacturers or those that you consume directly, like the clothes, right, or like the food items, right? So these basically are the, are the key reasons I would see for that increase that we have there. All right, well, looking at food inflation for September 2024, 37.7%. This is significantly higher than the previous year. I mean, even the World Bank posits that Nigeria is experiencing its worst food inflation. What measures can we can be taken to address this so far? I mean, what have we seen so far and, and what more needs to be done? Yeah, I, I, well, I, I do commend the government. I know the government has made efforts to give um, inputs, fertilizers, um, seedlings to a lot of um, um, a lot of producers. But um, I think um, beyond that, at this point in time, I think, first of all, we need to be careful. Um, there are early warning signals we need to pay attention to. Um, We've talked about the flooding that took place in September. Um, Cameroon has indicated that it's going to release water from the Lagdo Dam. So it's quite important that we put measures in place to ensure that we don't have a repeat of that event. Then in addition to that, I do think um, there are opportunities. I, I personally believe there are opportunities for Nigerians to do more in their cultural space. Um, rather than leave it to um, simple household farmers, I think smallhold farmers, I think we need to do a lot in terms of our institutions, right? Um, the, the agricultural institutions that we have, and I think we need to promote um, the viability and the attractiveness of agriculture for the youths, right, from that standpoint. Then I think also, again, in terms of preservation of most of these food items, um, at the points when you are moving these items from the um, farm gates to where they are being consumed, the markets, right, a lot of these items actually, um, they get spots along the way, right, so they post harvest losses. Uh, there is a research institute that has to do with stored products that records that we have about 40% of that. So if you consider the fact that our road transport network is not too good, and most of these vehicles that actually transport them, by the time you put them on that um, road infrastructure, you discover that most of those items drop off, especially if you look at areas like um, Oyo, Shogo, Bumosho, those kind of areas. So I think if we can do something with respect to our, rural, our road infrastructure network. Then also in terms of food preser of preservation, our storage, um, our storage infrastructure, I think a lot more investment needs to be done and to encourage people who operate along that value chain. I think to a great extent, we will be able to ensure that food doesn't spoil. We have enough supply and that should be able to moderate prices to a reasonable extent. So yeah. quite a myriad of measures there. And, yeah. um, these are all very implementable. Very, <laughs> very, very, you know, very if we use done, look at yeah. that. All right, well, let's look at how, what do you reckon when it comes to CBN and MBC? on the monetary side. How do you yeah. believe this inflation numbers will be read? Should we expect another rate hike? Yeah, I was listening I was listening to the short clip that you played before before I came on, on air, right? So I from the body language of the CBN, like the like it was even said at the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, um, they said they would do everything within their powers to actually address um, inflation. Do they are doing it from the um, money supply side, 
right? So um, do I see a rate hike? It, it seems likely based on that statement and based on the body language, it seems likely. And it was even the approach was even commended by the World Bank. So it seems likely they are going to do that. But one thing that we definitely they are not going to do is they are not going to reduce those rates, the um, money policy, the policy rate. They are not going to reduce it despite the fact that developed nations are doing it. But like they said, um, they are actually trying to go after money supply here. So and that's cast in stone. Yeah, Nothing it seems it seems it seems it seems likely. It's it's it might just be maybe a quarter of a um, of a percentage point. Yeah, that, that's what I see. Okay, what kind of policy response can we expect from the fiscal side? Well, from the fiscal side, uh, I think um, the um, government is actually doing a lot and. I think, um, take for instance, the um, committee that has to do with fiscal policy and tax reforms. I know they've put in some measures to actually um, alleviate the um, pains of businesses. I, I know they've sent some, ex some bills right, to the um, National Assembly. I think that that's a good one. I also think in addition to that, they might want to consider fast implementation of some of the policies that they've actually stated they are going to do. Um, you know, recent, okay, not so recently, we know that um, they, there were plans or there are plans to remove um, import duty on food, food, in, um, food imported into the country. But from what we've heard, from what we've seen, it seems like it's a bit difficult for um, producers to actually access um, those particular items duty free due to stringent conditions that are put in place. So I think they might want to look into such again. Then I think in addition to that, um, when it comes to energy, I know as much as possible we're trying to deregulate the downstream sector. I think um, a little bit much more needs to be done when it comes to finding substitutes, right? So the um, petrol, for instance, we don't want petrol because we want to consume petrol. We want petrol because it powers our cars to transport us and also goods from one place to another, logistics, right? So I think if we can invest in, we've talked about the CNG a lot of times, right? So I think a lot more needs to be done now especially in terms of the infrastructure, right? Um, getting the private sector to hit the ground running in terms of supporting governments in building infrastructure, like charging stations, right? Where they can sell um, these particular items and for the electric vehicles. Once again, like I said, they've actually done a lot. There was a VAT modification order, 2024, that is actually aimed at promoting investment in gas, right? Most of these substitutes. So, I do think they need to just be fast with implementation. Right, of course, because undoubtedly we all wait and we've bated breath to see a number of these measures uh, really kick in. But you know, Abedu, you are a tax manager, right? So yeah. there's no better person to be asking this question. How do you think a high inflation could affect tax revenues? Yeah, and, and that's a very interesting question. Okay, so there, there are two angles I'll, I'll look at it from. Um, so firstly, um, you only apply taxes when there is profit from a tax standpoint. So if we look at it from the perspective that um, businesses are doing well, yeah. and definitely the, the collections will be higher. But if businesses are impacted by these high costs, it will definitely impact on their profits, especially those who are not able to kind of channel that increased, increased cost to their output, right? So it will definitely impact on profitability. So from that standpoint, it can impact on um, what the tax authorities would collect. But there is also another point whereby um, if the businesses themselves are not compliant, um, the tax authorities, by the time they carry out what they call an audit and they assess them, they can then apply interest, right, for monies not remitted early. And the interest they would apply would kind of relate to what the policy rates that the Monetary Policy Committee are actually using. So to that extent, yes, they can also collect more. But I think more importantly, Despite the fact that um, the tax authorities have set high targets in terms of collection for this current year, about 19 trillion, for instance, 19 trillion naira, if you look at it in terms of um, the value, in terms of dollar terms, the collection is kind of reduced if you compare it to years like 2022, when even though it was 10 trillion in dollar terms, that was $22 billion. But currently, the 19 trillion in dollar terms would be somewhere within the range of 12, 12 billion dollars. Yeah. Right. I mean, if we look at efficiency and you know technological trends, we've mm -hmm. seen Kenya, for instance, uh, begin to adopt the use of AI in tax mm -hmm. collection. Do we see Nigeria gravitating towards that anytime soon? Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, so not even Kenya, um, East African countries, Rwanda, South Africa. Right, and um, it has even gotten to a point whereby you can, just the same way we use our automated teller machine, you can also do something similar with respect to um, assessing yourself and paying your taxes in countries like South Africa. So, and, and it's good you mentioned Kenya. So if these countries are doing it, I mean, the current policy committee team, that's exactly what they're trying to do, identify countries where they're achieving this kind of success 
and using data and stakeholder consultation. They are using this to actually drive those policies. So they are, it's actually possible in Nigeria. And I know the tax authorities themselves, they've looked, they currently have a, an online platform where you can actually carry out your tax assessment and make your payments. But even beyond that, I know there are plans um, to actually even detect how much a company should be paying, right? So there are plans to actually implement that. And very soon we might get to the stage of Rwanda where you don't necessarily even have to assess yourself sometimes. The tax authorities can know whether you are telling the truth or not. It yeah. really is one of the most beautiful things I've seen. Definitely. Things I've seen with regards to But it's good to hear that, you know, we're taking baby steps in mm -hmm. that direction. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, um, we will see it accelerate a lot faster. So while we're still in this realm, let's talk about the new uh, tax reforms by the government. What do you make of this? Yeah, I think I think I think it's 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 beautiful. Um, like I said, a lot of stakeholder consultation has gone into this and um, a lot of data gathering. So it's evidence driven. It's not it's not something of the top of someone's head. Right. So um, definitely, I think the withholding tax regulation, for instance, which was gazetted on the 2nd of October, the VAT modification order, both of them, they aim at actually, um, they aim at making business easier in the country. A lot of businesses have struggled, a lot of businesses have left. So these are friendly, right? So they are, they are pro-business. Then in addition to that, they've tried to remove um, impediments. They've tried to remove complexities, right? So governments can come up with a nice policy, but when it comes to implementation, it can be very difficult. So some of the things they've tried to do is to um, remove VAT on some certain items. Diesel cost, for instance, um, petrol, right? Um, LPG, liquefied petroleum gas, cooking gas. Um, the cost of one kilogram of cooking gas is 1,500, all right? Um, so if you want to buy 12.5 kg um, cooking gas, you are going to be spending like 16,000 Naira. I remember back in 2021, this was 4,000 Naira, right? So a lot of VAT has been taken off from these things because prior to now, if you imported it, um, you would pay VAT despite the fact that we can't supply the entire domestic market, right? There wasn't VAT on the domestic production, but there was on the imported one. So that has been taken out now. Then also in terms of um, the returning tax regulation, uh, manufacturers, suppliers, small business, says they won't have to um, endure withholding tax. Their, their income revenue would be um, exempt from withholding tax, which simply means that um, they don't have to look for a situation whereby they are faced with cash shortage, right? So these are some of the pro-business benefits. Very, very, very good. Right. Very good. But I mean, if we want to get a little bit more granular, what about the, you know, the plans to implement a 25% tax on individuals who are earning above mm -hmm. 100 million naira? What do you make of that? Yeah, and I know that means that we're making the rounds because a lot of people have been reaching out to me. Which is it not this. true? Well, um, to, to, be, to be realistic, I, I, I don't think it's a bad idea. I don't think it's a bad idea because the idea basically is it, they are trying as much as they can yeah. to ensure there is something we call a progressive taxation, right? So whereby people with the ability to pay these taxes are actually the ones paying it. And um, once they pay it, you can then support the, um, the vulnerable, right? Low income earners, you can support them. And that's what applies in most developed societies, right? And a good example, a good reference, who I know the, the chairman would always make um, reference to would be South Africa, for instance. Um, the largest taxes that are being collected in South Africa is actually coming from um, a few individuals, right? A lot of low income earners are exempted. And the money that is being collected in South Africa is way more than what we collect here in Nigeria, even from our highest earning tax, right? So to a large extent, I think that does make a lot of sense. I think for me, where um, there might be some cause of concern is where after government has collected these monies and it's not being put into good use, fiscal prudence, because the, the truth is that a lot of individuals are actually um, paying for most of the infrastructure that they expect government to give to them, right? So if I'm done taking care of my security, I'm done taking care of my, uh, my health care and my power, right, then I'm now paying higher taxes. Will the government sort out those areas? Especially if you, even if you think about your dependents, your dependent relatives and your neighbors, who you also support, black tax, right? So if government is still not prudent with this, then that might be a kind of double taxation in one sort <laughs> it's of regard. It's yeah. double taxation, but transparency yeah. is very important. Very key, you, but very I have key. a problem problem with pain, but are you going to put it to good use, right? Very okay, let's wrap up with your overall outlook on inflation. We've spoken about it quite extensively today, but what's your overall outlook in relation to the current economic uh, situation? Well, um, yeah, I, I, do, I, I do know that um, energy prices, which is the key concern for this um, recent increase, I do know that there are plans to actually um, probably moderate things, stabilize things. So I do think that inflation is going to be stable, right, within the range of 30 to 33% towards the end of the year. And um, given the fact that it's 
harvest season, all right? I do expect that things will actually moderate in terms of food prices. So I think um, on a steady level, we should expect within the range of 32% in the future, yeah. So we have a bit to look forward to, right? Uh, well, yeah. Are we going to we, hold we you should, to this? Uh, well, we should be <laughs> to this prediction. Uh, well, uh, there are some things in, in, in um, the country currently. There are a lot of things that are outside our control. So all things being equal, yeah, we should look okay. to Manage that Okay, manage our expectations. Abhi Adwana, thank you so much for joining us today on the Global Business Report. We'll see you again yeah, very soon. All right. Me.